Ray, thank you for joining me for part two for Short, Sharp and Succinct. So how do you feel biblical principles apply to today's life? I think they're very important. Uh, probably the most bit important one has to do with integrity and integrity of heart. There's a fascinating passage in Genesis where the man of God completely got it wrong because Abraham passed off his wife as his sister. I don't know about you, but if God woke you up in the early hours of the morning, he said, by the way, Jeannie, I'm about to kill you. Uh, I, I think he might get your attention. Is that right? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And For that's sure. Pretty that's what he said to Abimelech. He said, Abimelech, I'm about to kill you. Uh, to which Abimelech says, why? And he says, well, you're going to take a man's wife. And then Abimelech uh, looks at him and he said, the, out of the integrity of heart, I did not know this. And God actually goes on and says, I know that. And what's fascinating about Abimelech uh, is actually he acts as if he was the transgressor. When you look about how he restores and how he puts things right. Yeah. And integrity is is about it, it comes from the Hebrew word thum, which we get the word urim and thumin, you know, with this breastplate, what they wore to. And and it also is in the same group of words of wholeness, which we get our word holiness, because everything flows from integrity of heart. Everything flows from that. Like Abimelech said, I didn't know, you know, at the integrity of heart, at the wholeness of what I, I did not know. And God said, I know this and it's interesting actually god did bless abimelech from that moment onwards so biblical principles are uh, all flow from that on certainly on a personal level and on the uh, on on the wider level both externally and internally the bible does talk a lot about integrity as well throughout the bible so why is god's grace so amazing to you personally mainly because i've only got to look at my failures you know, not just the public ones. It's God's incredible grace in the way in which he draws you into situations and leads you through situations. Having the temptation uh, to go and do things in a different, in a way which are not according to the scripture. And we, we were a bit hard up for money and a woman in front of us in a Sainsbury's. Uh, she, I mean, this woman, I mean, I mean, she she had enough gold around her neck to pay off the national debt. When she opened the purse, the money spilled all over the floor and she missed one of the coins. And I can remember picking it up thinking, oh, thank you, Lord. And the Lord is saying, it's not yours. That's all he said. Mm, and I remember true. giving it yeah, and giving it back to her. And it was like, oh, well, I don't really need this anyway. And I'm thinking, why did I do that? And at the moment, I knew that my relationship it was my relationship with God, which was on the line. I could have kept that. Mm. All right. But what would have happened to the relationship? That, that kind of temptation, uh, which is there. I mean, having been a, a thief, all right, before I become Christ, there are some skill sets you wish you have forgotten. You yes, know, yes. And you haven't. And sometimes they, you know, sometimes they come in handy uh, there. Um, I remember when we first was the pastor at Hayes. Um, our neighbour had gone away. The daughter had come round uh, to cut the grass and she managed to lock herself out. And she said to me, oh, have you, uh, can you get me a locksmith? I said, I'll open the door for you because I know how to open doors. <laughs> you see. So I went round and using a coat hanger and a bit of string, I managed to open the door, you see. And she's sort of looking at me. And uh, at that moment, one of the members showed up and knocked on the door and said, where is pastor? And my wife said, oh, he's breaking into next door. You know? <laughs> so mm. some of these skill sets do come in handy. And others you think, oh, I, I wish I'd, I forgot how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So well, that's God's grace. Yeah. Yes, I, I can see that. Yes. And people invest time and energy, don't they, into developing, say, their career or their bodies or their relationships. But often we can neglect that spiritual dimension of our lives so how do you would you say ray actively pursue mm -hmm. spiritual growth because that's important in our lives isn't it the bible talks about the footstool the, of god he's on the throne and how we learn how to come to the footstool of god and hearing what he has to say just cultivating that presence of god with you you know 
getting back to that still small voice. The Bible describes the uh, the Holy Spirit as a dove. I, I want to be in that place. I think I've said this before, you know, where it's like the, the dove is on your shoulder and he's only got a rustle his feathers and you think, hang on a minute. Because sometimes the dove has gone and we don't know it. You know, classic example is Samson. You know, because yeah. in the end it says, and he did not know that the Lord had left him. Yeah. Uh, tragic verse. Very uh, tragic. There. Uh, but, you know, the, I want to be in that place of which basically the, the dove has only got to rustle its feathers. And that comes from cultivating being in the presence of God. You know, in yes. all things. You know, it's not just the emergency prayers, is it? It's like you're driving down the road and someone cuts out in front of you. And that's an emergency prayer, isn't it? It and is. Yeah, you also have to learn that, you know, Bible says, bless those who persecute you. So you bless them. You don't say things about them. <laughs> so that, that simple little place of him just being there with you uh, and hearing him each day. So that's that is really what I'm seeking to develop. And that means sometimes you put you know, what every day you put some time aside. Sometimes it's worth getting your diary out and blocking an hour off in the day and say, that's me and God time. And you don't allow anything else to come into that time. You know, simple little things that you can do. Does that make sense? It does make sense. We should spend time with the Lord. I always think if you have a doctor's appointment, mm -hmm. you will keep to that time. You will mm -hmm. get there on time. And it's the same with the Lord. You need to have that time with the Lord and not just think, oh, I, I don't think I'll do that today. You need to make sure... Mm -hmm to keep that if you like if you want to put it like that mm -hmm. that appointment yeah. so raymond i would like to ask you what bible character do you think you are most like and tell me why depends on the day of the week <laughs> as to what's going on you know um there are times you sit there and you feel like you're jacob and you know the mr wheeler dealer uh which you can do all the time there's other times you're sitting there and you've got the impetuous peter you know, who uh, is, I mean, he's up for everything, you see, and you know, because he's up for everything and he will have a go at anything, he gets into trouble. And I find myself doing that on more than one occasion. And there are times, you know, you're sitting there and you think, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like Thomas. You know, you, you're just absolutely full of doubt. And, uh, but you, you've learned that you, you, um, you learn to trust what God has said to you um, as, he, as he moves in your life so you know in the uh, like i said i mean sometimes it depends on what day of the week we're talking about or what is going on as to which one i'm most likely to uh to be like we we have to resist the temptation uh to presume that just because i've seen it before that this is what's going on uh that it might look identical but actually they're all different uh and learning that uh in that so which one do you want <laughs> Well, we can certainly learn from biblical characters, can't we? Yeah. So lastly, Ray, is there either a Bible verse or words of a song that has been a blessing to you in some way of recent? I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and leads his descendants are blessed. You Beautiful. Know. I've, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. There are times you sit back and you think, what is going on? Um, but God has never actually forsaken them. And uh, he leads them, in, he leads you through situations. Um, you know, I, yeah, that, 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 that is the kind of thing. And yeah, uh, what, what was that song? Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Right. Uh, what's it called? Um, Behold or something. Um, okay. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Yeah, you know, it goes on. Okay. Um, and you've got other things like Matt Redman's When the Music Fades and all this stripped away. I'm coming back all the time. We're coming back to that that, that sense of the, the heart of worship uh, yeah. and, and just being with him. But understanding that he does not forsake his people. Amen. You know? He doesn't forsake you. And uh, we can simply trust that he is there. You know, that doesn't always seem obvious, but he is there. Ray, I think that's a great place to finish. So can I say thank you for this interview for Short, Sharp and Succinct. And I think we can all take lessons away 
from what you have shared today. Thank you, Ray. God bless you.